have you uh, been in touch with your client, Mr. Anagnostu? Uh, I have. Um, I actually speak with him through his wife. <clears throat> he uh, uh, is reincarcerated. Uh, he had a probation violation. Um, and so uh, he is uh, back in just temporarily. Um, it was uh, understanding on his part, but probation, you know, doesn't allow misunderstanding. So I, I can report that uh, he is um, in the process. There's an issue with regards to uh, whether he's the father, genetic testing. Correct. And they have set up through uh, the Office of Support Enforcement, there's a program uh, that he is involved in. And as, as soon as he, he'll be out, he can be in no more than um, nine days. So June 6th, in, anywhere between here and there, is he'll be uh, released on this probation violation. Uh, but then he's planning on uh, submitting uh, the DNA testing, uh, and he wants to, you know, still get involved with his, uh, with his daughter's life. Miss Hicks, uh, any response? Um, yes. Please. It doesn't surprise me he's back in jail because he's always there. But um, as for a stable relationship, he called my daughter two days before he was supposed to be released, saying he broke up with his wife, and that he wanted her to go pick up his dog. And then he's continued to call her after he was released. So, in my opinion. That's not a very stable relationship at all. Well, I was hoping that we'd have the genetic testing done by today. Uh, we obviously don't have that. Right. Um, if it turns out he's not the father, then right. it's an issue we don't have to address. If he is the father, then we need to continue to uh, give him an opportunity to object and uh, um, handle it that way. So um, I, I will say reluctantly, I'm going to continue this. Um, I, I guess we're going to have to go out another month. Let me get a date here. So let's go out to June 22nd. At 10.30? At 10.30. I'm, unless... Uh, there's a really good reason why he hasn't done the um, fraternity test. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to agree to any more continuances for that purpose. Thank you very um, much. After uh, June 22nd. I'm, I'm, I gave him a month after he got out of jail. That ends today. I'm now going to give him another month. So, Mr. Anagnost, to impress on him the importance of getting that done. I will, Your Honor. Okay. So, we'll go to June 22nd. I will... Um, uh, extend the immediate emerg emergency minor guardianship until that date. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. Farr, I think you're on that case. Is Ms. Suanani here? I don't see her. All right. But I know that she was aware of the hearing, so sh maybe she's just running late. Not sure. Well, let me ask you a couple questions, and then maybe we'll um, go on to another case. Um, do you know, uh, we're here on the full petition. Do you know if the parents have been served? I didn't see. No, they haven't. The dad still hasn't been served. Okay. So we need to address that uh, if Ms. Kuanani gets on. Um, all right, let's pass it for the moment and then we'll we'll come back to it, okay? Okay. Thank you. I'm here too, Your Honor, Kendra. All right, thank you. Um, there's somebody uh, who's an advocate who I want to talk to, uh, or uh, where'd she go? Miss uh, Thalette? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I just want to make sure I don't miss this. What case are you here on? I'm here for Charles Willard. I didn't see a docket for this. Uh... Uh, I see. It's number six on our docket. Okay. All right. Good. I just want to make sure I didn't uh, pass it yet. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're on McCoy right now. We have um, Miss uh, Yasanovich. And um, I did see a consent filed by uh, Mr. McCoy. Um, do we have service on the mother, Tesla Ivy? Uh, oh, Miss Ivy is here, I see. Okay. Yeah, she's here. And so, yes, she was uh, given the paperwork. We were able to deliver the paperwork to her um, at her rehab, I think, within the first 30 days of her sobriety. Okay. Miss Ivy, what's your position on? the petition for guardianship. Um, I'm not going to sign the paperwork, um, but I'm on a, I'm the 23rd on a list for a four bedroom apartment. 
and um, I'm enrolled in outpatient and did my assessment for mental health. Um, so however long that takes, I'm willing to like let the kids stay there, but I'm not going to sign any paperwork. All right. And I'm, I'm in a stable spot right now. So, and um, I got to see my kids the other day and yeah, that was awesome. So I look forward to seeing them this Sunday too. And yeah, I'm just doing what I need to do. So, so, Your Honor, I, can heal, so I can heal and then, um, yeah. And my yes. kids, my kids are totally okay with that. So. Ms. Mm. Uh, Yosinovich. Yeah. So, um, she did come in for a visit and it was a good visit. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I've always liked Tesla. Um, and I'm again, super proud of her for being, having this much sobriety, but I think, I think maybe she's operating under the assumption that sobriety is going to heal everything. And that it's just going to be, everything's going to be back to normal hunky dory and the children. I can't speak for Brayden. We don't talk to Brayden about this a lot because it's obviously he's five, but Colton and Mickey, um, McKenzie, have vocalized even over breakfast this morning that they do not want to leave. They are not ready. Um, and when apparently uh, Tesla had said something to them about her getting her a place and it, it scared them because they don't want to leave. They're not ready. They, they want to stay here. Um, and I just really feel that it's going to be detrimental to them to be pulled away. It's sobriety. Isn't a fix. It's certainly a good start, but the kids have been hurt by the continued use. And I know Tesla knows that. And I know she loves her kids, but I just think they need time to heal. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to, um, get them into counseling. I'm trying, I'm working my butt off right now to make money so I can get them private counseling because the state really doesn't pay. I'm not getting anything from the state except for food stamps for them. Um, so I just, I just want to, I really want to plead with the court to, really take into consideration the fact of what these kids have gone through and what they're telling me at 13 and almost 12 years old, what they need and what they want. Miss okay. um, Ivy, yes, sir. when, when do you plan to move into housing? When, uh, however long it takes. Um, okay. I'm honestly not rushing things right now. I'm just not signing the paperwork. Um, two weeks before I went into rehab, my oldest told me that he, he did want to live with me again. So I don't know. You know, and when I went to visit them, they just want me sober and clean and doing the work. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to rush nothing. Um, and I also plan on doing family counseling with them and taking a parenting class. So that's also my goals. Let me hear from Ms. Smith, okay? Okay, thank you. Ms. Smith. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, admittedly, that I have not had a, a chance to speak with the kids yet. Um, the, my caseload has just been um, pretty intense lately. Um, yeah. Most of everything that's been shared is accurate. The last time I spoke with Miss Ivy was uh, May 1st, um, and that was when she was still inpatient. Um, majority of the things that she's already provided you are the same things that she provided me, um, it, with exception for, I believe that Miss Ivy at that time had intended on participating in the Mountain Ministries, and maybe that's changed. It sounds like that's changed since then. Um, yes. In reviewing some of the um, data that I was able, I show that Miss Ivy actually has a pending criminal matter that hasn't been resolved. Um, and that may impact uh, Miss Ivy's ability to remain involved with the kiddos. Um, so that's um, something on my um, radar to monitor moving forward. Um, I uh, plan to meet with the kids shortly. I'll actually reach out to Miss Yovanovitch this week um, to schedule that time. It's been um, a little bit of a struggle with my schedule, um, but to provide the report with complete information. Father's largely been um, uninvolved. He's disengaged, um, although he does he has participated in uh, visits along the way intermittently. All right. Yeah. And, well, I, do and I do have that. a consent from him. Yeah. And I do want to make that known too, just for the record that actually David has been very hands-on. Um, he shows up, he's been doing a lot of visitation. Um, he's really been actually very pleasant to deal with and um, the visits go really well with him. So I'm super, I'm super proud of him. <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right. Um, so, um, what we have is um, a petition for what we call a full guardianship, which means a guardianship until the children are 18 years old. That's been filed by Ms. Yosanovic. Um, there's uh, a uh, opposition to that um, by Ms. Ivy. Um, and in that case, then we need to have what is called an evidentiary hearing that would probably last a half hour to 45 minutes. And, um, so I think what I want to do at this time is schedule 
that hearing um, and I'm looking at either end of June or beginning of July. Uh, we could do it June 29th uh, or July 6th. I, I don't know if there's a preference for any other parties. But... Can we do it the 29th? Um, as Tesla obviously knows, uh, Mickey's birthday is um, on the 5th and we were planning to have a family gathering and have everybody over. So it would kind of, I, it would just be weird to have it right next to our birthday, if you don't mind. <laughs> And uh, Ms. Ivy, will that work for you? Yes. Okay. All and right. Your Honor, my biggest concern with, you know, just continuing to put it off, and I understand why Tesla doesn't want to sign off, but I, I understand. I do. I'm a mom. You know, I've got three daughters of my own. Um, my main concern right now is it's been very difficult for me to get any aid from the state because um, I don't have guardianship. Also, um, getting the kids to the doctor and also Brayden needs to be enrolled in school. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to be the third party in that, you know, it's been very difficult to deal with the schools back and forth. Um, also daycare. Um, if, if I were able to get guardianship, then at least the state would pay for some of his daycare because I am working full time and it's just, it's been a real struggle. So I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, um, unfair or, you know, not work with either one of the parents. It's just, it is a struggle. Okay. And I did, um, just so you're aware, I did look into doing the emergency um, guardianship as you had instructed before. Unfortunately, because I'm not a family member, um, the clerk advised me that it would be another $240 for me to file again. And to be honest with you, Your Honor, I just don't have that kind of money. The kids are growing, they need clothes, they need shoes. There are all three of them doing sports now, and it's just financially not feasible for me. Okay. All right. Well, I'd like the children uh, to stay with Ms. Yasanovich, and it sounds like there's some cooperation on allowing Ms. Ivy to uh, be able to see them. So I want that to continue also. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have always made that perfectly clear to her that she is more than welcome. All right. And um, we'll... Um, Come back on June 29th then for a hearing. Okay. And um, I want to give both of you a statute number. Uh, you could get this on Google if you want. But it, for Washington, it's called RCW 11130.185. Okay. So that lays out the criteria by which I would um, appoint uh, a full guardian for the children. Okay. And um, uh, if both of you want to look at that um, and then, uh, so at least you know what the um, the law is that I'll be dealing with as we go forward. Okay. And so just to clarify for the hearing, um, that statute that you gave, will that also sort of let each of us know what we're supposed to pre present? Or is that something that Mallory will go over with us? How does that work? I think if you look at the statute, you'll see what the requirements yeah. are. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, that that will just help you um, look at what, what you'd want to present to me. Okay. Okay. All right. So, oh. um, what was the name of the website I get it on? It's 11.130. I got, I got that part, but oh. is that all I type in? Like, what web address? Oh, if you went to Google... Mm -hmm. And typed in RCW and then that oh, okay. that site, uh, it will bring it up for you. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And then just one more question, Your Honor. Um, sure. What time on the 29th? Same 1030 again? Or? That's a good and question. Yes, at 1030 case, again on Zoom, just like uh, Francis. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Brooke Hempel. I am oh. the uh, foster parent and um, petitioner. Okay. Um. Ms. Villett, why don't you weigh in first on this case? Thank you, Your Honor. Child advocates are in support of the court entering the orders for full minor guardianship today. As we know from prior, the parents both did consent to the emergency minor guardianship. Um, however, I believe service has, I'm not sure that it's been officially, I don't know. I don't know the, the father has been able to be served for this piece. He has, um, through the dependency, been not involved um, since at least October of 2022. Um, and from, from my perspective and speaking with the parents and their counsel, they kind of each thought once they signed that original consent for the emergency minor guardianship that they were done. Neither parent has visited since, since, since signing that document originally. Um, 
the court has waived exclusive jurisdiction through the dependency matter to allow this to move forward today. I did notify all of the other legal parties from the dependency that this action was occurring today, and they all sort of indicated they're not going to come. They're not appointed in this matter. Um, but everybody, as an officer of the court, I can share that every legal party is in support of this moving forward. Um, we're just hopeful to get permanency for Francis today. All right. Ms. Hempel, any um, comment? Uh, yes, sir. Or yes, John, sorry. Um, I have not been able to serve the father. Um, I have been unable to contact or um, get any sort of location on father. Um, I have not been able to get any papers to him, but I did serve mom and um, mom is still, as far as I know from what she told me, is still in compliance with um, giving me guardianship. Just one moment here, okay. I can add, Your Honor, I did reach out to the legal parties and father's counsel through the dependency, the attorney general's office, and the social worker to ask for assistance in gathering any of that contact information, and nobody has anything at this time. Okay. All right. Um, I've got consents by the parents that have been filed in this action number 23-4001-4008. Uh, that was done um, simultaneous with the petition for the emergency minor guardianship, uh, which I did grant. Uh, after that, there was a petition for a full minor guardianship filed. And um, it appears that the parents have not been served with that. However, what's been described to me today is that they may not be able to be served without well, they, they cannot be served with reasonable effort, which is one of the bases uh, that I, I can look at. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Yes. Um, mom was served. Okay. I just went yesterday to turn in my proof of service with the justice system. Or okay. So that was filed with the clerk yesterday? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So good. The mom was served. Uh, the father... Um, has not been. Looks like he has not been served, but it, it sounds like that's um, proving to be extremely difficult. And, yes, Your Honor. Um, given the fact that he's already filed a consent, um, I am comfortable uh, making a decision that uh, we can go forward and sign the uh, full guardianship today. Okay. And uh, do you have that order? Okay. My clerk indicates we do not have that order. So, Ms. Hempel, you'll need to prepare... Um, a full guardianship order. I think it's a, uh, called an order appointing guardian for a minor. Uh, you can get that from Washington State Court Forms, uh, or they might have it at the clerk's office. Okay. And if you fill that out and then indicate that it should go to Commissioner Dave Nelson, uh, when I get it, I'll sign it. Yes, yes. Your Honor. Thank you. Dylan, are, are you wanting to sign off on that? I can sign off on that and I can grab that order from, from the internet and get it to Miss Simple and then serve it. Miss Simple's out of the county and I'm in county, so I can assist. Okay. Uh, Miss Villa, then we'll work with you to get that order prepared. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. You're okay. Thank you. Wanting to terminate your guardianship and have Christine Matthews step in. Is that right? Oh, no. the other way around. No, actually it her the guardianship was by her at her aunt Pamela Proffer up in Alaska. And we're looking to she Set, she's been living with us a year. She's actually went to Alaska and got the got them to appoint the case to or got approval from Washington to have it have it be moved down here. And then we would be I'm petitioning for full guardianship. Okay. Christine Matthews and myself are petitioning for full guardianship. Okay. I appreciate that you're willing to um, step up and do this. Um, when somebody wants to be terminated and a new guardian goes in, uh, the court has to make sure that that's a um, um, appropriate and, and safe situation for the, the child. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is appoint what's called a court visitor to uh, do some initial investigation and report back to the court to make sure that this termination and reappointment of, um, of you uh, is something that, again, is appropriate. Okay. 
So let me give you the name of the court visitor. Um, it is going to be Sherry Farr. And, Sherry um, Farr, F-A-R-R. Yeah. Okay. Miss, Miss Farr is here. She can um, uh, unmute herself. I apologize, and, Your Honor. I, I wasn't listening. Which case was this? Um, sure. This is a guardianship of Pamela Oliver. Okay. And um, the current guardian wants to terminate, and Ms. Vandenberg and Christine Matthews want to substitute in. Perfect. And Ms. Uh, Vandenberg, if you could type your uh, phone number into the chat for me under the private message, then I will get back in touch with you. Right. Thank you. All right, I'm going to put this out to uh, June 22nd. The current guardianship will stay in effect. And then um, after Ms. Farr has a chance to talk with you, um, uh, hopefully on June 22nd, we can go ahead and make the change at that point. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Farr okay. is here. All right. Thank you both. And I know uh, Ms. Crawl is here. Mr. Mm -hmm. Peters is here. And uh, Ms. Cutbirth is here. Um, I need to, there we go. So, um, Ms. Farr, uh, I ordered Ms. Crawl to do a UA uh, last time we were here. Did she provide any to you? No, Your Honor. And, and I did receive a, um, a, a note from Performance Occupational Health that on May 12th, uh, mom went in to do a drug test. However, she had something shaped like a bottle in her pants and refused to take it out. So I believe that the court um, counts that as a positive. Um, and that mom has communicated with me uh, just recently, I believe yesterday, that she is unable to pay for a drug test. And that's why she hasn't gone back to get one done. Uh, the next question is, um, I had um, ordered telephone or video visits twice a week. Have those been occurring? Um, Ms. Cutler? Um, yeah, for the most part, it's been a little bit, we've, I've tried to work with her and she's tried to work with me. I'd admit that there's times when, you know, I haven't been available on the days that we scheduled. Um, yesterday she was supposed to have a phone call. She didn't call. Not, I don't really know what happened with that. She didn't message me. I haven't heard from her. Um, I attempted to give her a phone call on her son's, on Bruno's birthday. That didn't work out. I talked to her, but we kind of got into it and I ended up blocking her on Facebook, but she does have my cell phone number and has contacted me since then on my cell phone. So I don't really know what happened with yesterday's phone call. Um, there have been times where I haven't been available for a phone call, but I've also made it so that we make up the phone call later or on a different or the next day or whatever. Um, it's been kind of a little bit iffy and weird, but most, I mean, somewhat successful too. Bruno has had some contact with her. Okay, thank you. Mr. Peters, any comment? I, um, I, I think that me and my sister's goal here is to protect Bruno, um, from any kind of, um, imbalance in his life or having to be, um, drugged through the system in any kind of way, but we are, we are facing challenges with him. Um, both of us, we, I know my sister has a lot of her own personal things that have come up in her life that she's dealing with that are a separate issue and it's made it very challenging for her. And, um, you know, I will say she, she has been awesome in this, in this process of helping with, with Bruno. And, um, I, I think that we're kind of both at a place where we don't really know what to do. His behaviors have reached in an extreme to the point of like, um, it's, it's causing, it's, it's very stressful is what I can say. And we are trying to combat these behaviors the best that we can. But, um, I think that he's acting out more because he, this has had a great effect on him and he is, um, trying to find some normalcy in all of this. And, um, it's just been very difficult. I know that he does really want to see his mother a lot. And, um, you know, I, I heard today that, you know, being clean and sober isn't enough. And I got to agree with that statement. I think it, it's so much more than that, what he needs. And um, I would ultimately like to see him and his mother reunited. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I, I'm just here taking care of him and being his dad, as I always have been. And no matter what the circumstances of my life are, I will continue to try to do everything I can to help this child. Uh, 
I have other, I have two daughters in my home and his sister, um, his biological sister, Jocelyn, who's not just almost eight years old. And, um, she gets kind of scared sometimes when he acts out in the home. And, um, I want to make sure that everybody feels okay. Um, and, and make sure that everyone's needs are getting met. Um, I, I had thought today about suggesting, um, holding this over and, and filing for temporary guardianship myself because my sister just can't do it anymore. And, and given a timeline of when he can be reunited with Miss Kroll. But I would, I would have to know some sort of timeline. Ms. Cutberth, is that uh, accurate that you're feeling overwhelmed with this? Yes, um, I have. Like he said, I did have some stuff come up this week that was unforeseen to me before now, obviously, and it's a major family stuff. And so I really am overwhelmed with this because I have now I have other stuff that is involving my my children and my husband and my immediate family. And so it's kind of become a lot for me. Um I think that Brad taking guardianship over Bruno might be a good thing. And I'm willing to help Brad in that endeavor um, and support him through it. It's just that I need to be more of a support rather than the main um, person, if that makes sense. All right. Ms. Crawl, do um, you want to first address what happened with the UA and then um, tell me your thoughts on the telephone visits? Yeah, I overthought the UA and a, I started thinking about marijuana being a problem because I'm pregnant and I went to actually fake my UA. And then I went back and uh, went to go get pay for one that was uh, the UA and watched so that they'd see me <clears throat> and that marijuana is going to be in my system. And I did my ID and I went back, I went to the place probably six times all year. And um, I, a friend was going to pay for the UA and then he wasn't going to, and it just became a big thing. And um, I, I have an intake today at two for outpatient services and the Phoenix house has openings and um, I'm going to be enrolling back in PCAP to have extra support just because the behavior behind trying to uh, cover up is sneaky behavior. And uh, there's a lot I can learn from going another round of outpatient. I'm Bruno's perfectly suitable to be where I'm at. Um, I'm willing to do, I don't, if there's a possibility to do UAs somewhere that uh, no cost to me, it would be easier because it's very expensive. And, uh, from what I heard that neither one of them can do this with uh, Bruno and Bruno's very unhappy. He can't speak freely when I talk to him about it. And, uh, and honestly, yesterday I thought, <gasps> Ms. Crawl, do you want to go on? Um, I don't know what happened with Ms. Crawl, but I will say that, um, I don't know if I'm able to speak right now or if we're waiting for Miss Crawl. Uh, you can go ahead. I just wanted to say that Bruno is not unhappy. I don't think that that's fair to say. I think he definitely wants to see his mom and he's unhappy when he's being disciplined because um, that is that is the main cause of the issues with Bruno is um, that, that where we're struggling with his behaviors is around disciplinary action. So if he's asked to go and take a breather and decompress. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to continue. He and, and I have him enrolled in counseling services to help with that. We're kind of addressing some anger issues. He's saying that he has a really hard time controlling his anger. And so those are things that I'm working with him through counseling on. I don't think it's fair to say that he's unhappy. He's very happy on a regular basis. I think there have been times when Shira had phone calls with him where he was in an elevated state and so he maybe seemed unhappy but that's because he wasn't listening and he wasn't sitting on the he wasn't doing what he was asked to do um i think that he um hold on i'm sorry just one moment sorry my son came to my door my toddler wanted me um, um before you go on i want to note that it looks like um uh, kroll uh left the meeting i'm not sure why okay. um but i i do want to continue this discussion so Okay. Um, I, I understand your comment is uh, he's not unhappy. So, Mr. Peters, it sounds like your intent would be to file for minor guardianship yourself at this point. Yeah, um, but like I said, I want to create some sort of timeline with it if we can. Um, where Timeline where um, 
Miss Curl's right. getting the things done that she needs to get done because honestly, this is exhausting for everybody. We have <laughs> we have overextended and exerted ourselves to a level that it, it, it's just like he's not. He is just has started counseling like a month ago, but when he has anger outbursts in the house, they affect everyone. And yeah. I have other children to worry about their safety. And he has expressed things like, I want to kill myself and I want to kill you. And I have to be, I how have old, other children to he think now? about. He is, he is 11. Okay. Well, Ms. Kroll just indicated that she went to do UA and tried to fake it. Um, well, she, based on based on that, I'd say we're probably about a, at least a year away from her getting to a point where she can take him full time. Yeah. Is, is that a commitment you're willing to make? At this time, I, I honestly the most honest answer I can give you is I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I think that's the consideration you may need to look at. And it sounds like Ms. Cutbirth, you're not able to see yourself going forward with this i i can't with everything that i have going on it's looking like i'm i i have a lot of family stuff but i am willing to if we can even do a continuance where brad has a chance to kind of think about it and really you know we talk about the solutions because there are solutions with bruno it's not just he's not just a bad kid he's no. just got a lot of stuff and i think yeah. that some of those solutions include kind of figuring out um, some of his medical stuff. He has an appointment in July. I want to get him tested for some um, serious medical issues that his mom's never really been willing to address. And so I think that like, if we are able to address some of that stuff and maybe get him the help that he really truly needs, I think that that would benefit and make it a lot easier to manage Bruno. I think that um, he has these anger outbursts and he has these big feelings and he doesn't even have control over it sometimes. Yeah. And yep. I think that that's a big issue. Um, I do feel as though um, if those weren't as, if, if we were able to get some of his medical concerns under control, I do think that um, it would be, a, it, that he would be manageable. Cause when he's good, he's really great. He's such yeah. a sweet boy. And like yeah. right now he's, he's totally accepting his he's gotten in trouble at school and so he's home today and he's just down at the table doing schoolwork like he's doing what he needs to do so some days it works but it's just a matter of him being dealt with the way he needs to be dealt with i think that being out of school over the summer is going to make things easier on him too he's having a lot of problems at school and that's been a big struggle for him so i think that some of that is going like there's a lot of factors to it but i think that if we had time at least just even a couple weeks a week or two to really talk about and discuss what we're going to be able to do moving forward. I think that that would be very beneficial. All right. Absolutely. I want to hear from Ms. Farr, who's been listening to this conversation and any, any thoughts from you? Uh, Your Honor, I think, um, you know, what Ms. Um, Cutworth is saying that he probably needs to, to be evaluated by a medical doctor for certain things and medicated if necessary. And though, and it would be, it would help with his behavioral issues um, I think he's got things that have not ever been addressed that need to be addressed. Um, and there, there may be some other options that the family can explore uh, through the state, getting help through other services uh, to get him some the help that he needs. Um, my concerns with mom are that I, I don't believe she is stable. And um, I, I would agree with you that we're prob probably several months uh, to a year out from her proving herself to be um, able and to to maybe parent at that time right <clears throat> so you know I can try to help this family um, give, give them some options that they can look into for other services through the state um, to get him some to get Bruno some the help that he needs um, whether that means staying in their home or being removed and placed elsewhere I don't know but we can we can look into what all of those things might be what I'd like to do is put this out to June 22nd. Okay. And um, during that time, I'm going to extend the immediate emergency minor guardianship and leave Ms. Cutberth um, the guardian during that okay. time. Um, if Mr. Peters decides that uh, he's willing to petition, you need to get that petition in and hopefully get a hearing set on June 22nd also. Uh, but at a minimum, show up on June 22nd and let me know that that's in the works. And then yes, uh, Ms. Farr and uh, we'll be in touch with both of you 
Um, certainly as part of any order that I enter, um, I can create a uh, requirements for Ms. Crawl to uh, meet before um, there's visitation and and uh, and eventually where she can have custody. Um, yeah. I guess the issue is if if she uh, doesn't meet those requirements, then where do we go from there? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I'm we certainly can enter an order like that. Uh, um, so, Your Honor, I have one more question, if I may. Sure. What? Um, and I'm not saying that uh, you know she should be unsupervised with him right now because I don't think that would be a good thing. But what is the possibility of her getting some supervised visits with her son? And what? Uh, I I um. Well, I'm not sure that I'm ready to order that right now. I think okay. um, I want um, some input from this far. What I understand is she at one point came to you with um, Bruno and said, you take care of him. And that oh, was she didn't like even a, come to me. She just dropped him off on my doorstep with a note. Okay. So that happened. And there was, it sounds like from the file, eight months where she had no contact with him. Correct. Mm -hmm. And he's 11. He wants to have contact, but we may need to have a special kind of counseling between the two of them yes. um, to um, reestablish that. Sure. And I, I'm, um, I need more input from Ms. Farr. Let me tell you, she's in the waiting room, so I want to um, admit her. Sure. Okay. Good. It looks like it. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sorry about that. My phone died. Okay, good. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, that was stressful. Okay. So, Your Your Honor, so Miss Crawl was indicating that she has an appointment for outpatient services. Um, you know, and if she is accepted into that, they, then she'll be able to get UAs through them um, without paying privately. I believe her insurance should cover that at that point. But I also think that she, you know, needs to go through those services, get her the counseling she needs before you can before we could even look at reunification counseling. Oh, can I finish talking? Um, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, and I apologize last week for my outburst, pretty much an outburst. Uh, that wasn't very fair and I'm not really very good at court. Um, is there any way we can just continue this? I want to uh, get in contact with PCAP and Jamie and have extra support. I don't feel like this is going in a way that, um, it needs to be going. Bruno's behaviors and his, this is way too important for me to be doing on my own. I'm not very, I'm just not good at it at all in court. I'm a lot of emotionally charged with it. Um, I'm very frustrated. I'm not getting along with, uh, I'm just, it's, it's really hard. I and was, my son's been suffering and I can't do anything at all to help him or reach out or be supportive other than phone calls. Yesterday, I thought it was, I thought today's Wednesday. Um, Ma'am, yeah. be before you uh, log back on, I had indicated I was going to continue this to June oh, okay. 22nd. Um, uh, is there any way that we can do uh, in-person visits and have it supervised by um, somebody? It could be, I don't know right offhand in a second. I just don't feel very prepared. I should. This is just a... Sorry, my heart's like racing. And I don't. So I do need um, some direction from the guardian ad litem. Um, I do need. I haven't some, got a chance to talk to her all the way. I do need I some result from a, a UA drug test. Yeah. Um, I, I'm as far as right, if you're going into outpatient in the next week, they will take care of that. And so you'll be able to provide those. And, yeah, and that's, that's, I'm going to need that before I can make a decision about supervised visitation. And, uh, um, this is just, it's really damaging for him. He feels like he doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have a home or a place. He doesn't have any space at Caterin's. He's not, Brad's indicated he's just a girl dad. He, uh, he said, or I've heard he wants to, he can have guardianship until um, we figure out where Bruno's going with me. And uh, I just like my heart. I just, I want to reach out to him. I can't do anything for him. And there's been no, I don't even know what to say. Like, well, I, I do want you to know that both Mr. Peters and Ms. Cutberth um, are in favor of visitations with you. Um, but I need 
um, additional information before I'm comfortable. So um, if you're going to be upset at anybody, you can be upset at me. And I, I'm going to have to leave the telephone calls and video visits in place until June 22nd. Hopefully we know a lot more on June 22nd and we can um, make um, provisions for visitation at that time. Okay. Um, I don't understand I'm, this. I've never been, nothing's ever been proven at all. And it's just, the kids are just suffering. I'm, I'm suffering. Yep. My son's struggling and I can't do anything for him. I don't know if I can ease her mind by saying that, like, Bruno's not suffering. Bruno yeah. is struggling. He's suffering. With... If it makes you look bad, I'm sorry, but he's suffering. He can't, he's not at home anywhere. He has no space at all at your house. He does he no actually space. have his right. home let's, room. Let's not talk to you. want to hear that, yeah. Okay. Um, right. I do right. want to know what I can do for Bruno in regards to, I am very careful not to talk to him about anything going on with this court case, but every time he gets mad, he says, you're not letting me see mom. This is all your fault. So I don't really know how to communicate with him. And I just tell him, no, you know, buddy, there's, there's court system in place that's, um, preventing that right now and that I'm doing my best to kind of well you, I, you can tell them that's what the that. judge ordered at this point okay okay, okay. I'll just well, yeah that's kind of what I've been saying but I'll keep why keep can't I see him there's no proof at all I, if I had a lawyer this wouldn't go be going this way I feel like I'm being ran over all right I I think um we've discussed this um and I'm going to put it over to June 22nd I hope everybody's in touch with Ms. Farr um, I, I would like to consider, um, some type of visitation on June 2nd. Okay. Thank you. Right. Oh, June, June 22nd, right? Not June, June 2nd. I, I'm sorry. June 22nd. If I miss okay. that's okay. I just wanted to double make sure. All right. That's a Thursday at 1030 on zoom. Just like today. Yeah. Your Honor, I, I don't want to eat up any more of the court's time, but I would like to say one last thing, too. On Bruno has a bedroom here at his home that he's always had with all of his toys, and he well, we have normal family that. life. We have, uh, we have normal family life and do normal family activities when he is here. Okay. The I biggest issue, the biggest issue that Bruno Whatever, is struggling with. Um, Mr. Yeah, I, I, Mr. Peters, I, your comments I are just... Making I can't things listen to, I, there's a so, lot of trauma okay. revolving around okay. me and Brad. I can't we're, do this court and listen to Brad okay. every single time. I just can't do it. We're okay. We'll see everybody back on June 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zarnecki, I see that you're here. Yes, yeah, sir. And um, I asked you to uh, provide wage information and you did. So I appreciate that. Um, I guess I have a question. Um, how many individuals are in your household that you support? Right now, currently, just me. I have my youngest, well, I have my youngest son every morning and on the weekends. And then once this is dealt with, if my old, if I can figure out and get my oldest son back, I'll have him. But right now, it is just me full time. But I do have a younger son I take care of. All right. Your Honor, I just wanted to uh, remind the court that it appears that Ms. Michelle Sullivan is here as well. Um, and I did reach out to um, petitioners, Lily and Thomas, about today's court hearing. I just wanted to remind the court that it was my understanding that the parties were in agreement with terminating the minor guardianship at this point. Um, but I wanted to give them an opportunity to either confirm that for the court or uh, inform of their change. Well, I... Um... Seems I need to hear from Lily Sullivan. I'm here, Your Honor. Oh, good. Um, so, Miss Sullivan. So, all right, Miss Sullivan. Um, Miss Smith has indicated you may want to terminate the minor guardianship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And why is that? Because my daughter is in a better mental place. She has more support. She has more help. She's in my home, so I help her all the time. Joseph is here. He is doing remarkably well. He is off of his medications other than when he has to go out into public to a place he hasn't been, then he will take them. But other than that, he's doing well in school. He's doing well with his household chores that he's assigned. He's a happy, laughing kid. Okay. So I think with... My where my where does Mr. Zarnecki fit into this picture then? 
Joseph still wants no contact, and I'm not going to force him to do something that he's been forced to do his whole life. When he wants contact, then he can have contact. I'm not going to stop it. I ha I never have. And you can ask Mr. Zarnicki that. I have never stopped contact except when we did this guardianship. Yes, sir. She not? has. They both have her. Michelle, I have kept my son from you before. No, this is not like to They've done it multiple All right, times. Let's, let's not uh, discuss okay. that right now. Let me uh, just say what will happen. If I terminate uh this minor guardianship so basically i won't um order anything and, and i'll terminate the proceeding then any issues regarding parentage mr zarnecki you would have to deal with through a family law court um, that's fine bring a petition there to ask i'm ready uh, i'll be ready to do all that within a couple of days okay all right i just wanted you to know the the avenue that you'd have to do yeah, so um, I got to turn around and do all the court stuff myself and bring it towards her, towards Michelle. So, like I said, I'm prepared for it. I will be ready for the next couple of days to turn stuff into the courts. Okay. I want to be able to see my son, and they have continuously pulled this before, so I have to go through the courts. That way they can't fight it. So, uh, Ms. Smith, what's your position on terminating? Your Honor, I'm actually in agreement with it. At this point, uh, Michelle is residing with uh, Mr. and Ms. Sullivan. Uh, Joseph is there. Joseph's getting the supports that he needs. Um, there is a fracture to his Joseph's relationship with his father at this point. Um, I think that the parties are are um, will be able to navigate that. Um, I think that um, Joseph isn't lacking for advocacy. Um, he's like Miss Lily Sullivan said. He's engaged in school. He's engaged in mental health supports. He's got a peer counselor. Um, he's got a tremendous uh, support system for him right now to help him navigate um, family conflict. Uh, you know, depending on how uh, the conversations go between Michelle and Chris, mother and father, there's the potential that um, Chris may be given the opportunity to engage in some reconciliation with Joseph, um, some better understanding. I think it would serve the child well um, if father did spend a little bit of time understanding um, more acutely the the challenges that Joseph has. I actually have a report um, that I will be filing today that I will serve on the parties to provide um, specific recommendations as to um, how to best support Joseph moving forward, um, especially mental health, education, those types of things. All right. Uh, uh, if I terminate, question. I would not be able to implement those recommendations. They would just be, uh, at that point, suggestions to the parties. Correct, Your Honor. And, and simply say it's just in my analysis. My, my recommendation is that we terminate the minor guardianship, but in my analysis, I do provide um, areas and ways that we can better support Joseph moving forward. Okay. Mr. Yeah, Zernecki, yeah. go ahead. Um, has anybody seen proof behind what she's saying? She's notorious for lying, and without proof, I don't I don't believe what she's saying. Well, at this... I'm turning around overnight, and all of a sudden, just doing wonderful with no issues. Her house is an issue, so I did... Without proof to back up what she's saying, I don't see why she's being believed. Your Honor. Well, just a minute. Uh, there's been a request to terminate. Miss Smith apparently has um, done an investigation to where she's recommending that I agree to the termination. And all of the issues that Mr. Zarnecki uh, just commented on that he's concerned about can be addressed in a family court. And so um, I, I don't think you're without a remedy, Mr. Zarnecki, you just have to go uh, through a different procedure. Well, I am still point. without a, re a remedy because I'm still not able to see my son unless I go to court to force them to let me see my son, which I don't think is fair for Joseph, and I don't think it's fair for me. Okay. Well, I should be able to see my son, especially if this stuff's not going through. They wasted all of your guys' time and my time, okay. and all they want, they, they haven't showed no proof behind nothing. I understand they want to terminate it now, but they've wasted all of our times. Then they haven't pr provided proof on anything. Last time I talked to Miss Smith, she didn't see, hasn't seen anything either besides just what Lily's saying. All right. Based on the um, recommendation of the guardian ad litem and based on the request of the potential uh, guardian uh, in the case of Joseph Zarnecki, I'm either going to sign a order terminating uh, the guardianship, or I think more likely I'll do an order dismissing the current action. Um, and so as of today, it will be terminated. Uh, no orders will be entered. As I indicated, any 
further um, requests for visitation uh, would need to go through a family law court. Okay. So I All think right. the question uh, that um, Ms. Farr and I spoke about briefly when I first called the case was whether the parents were served and apparently they have not been served. Is that right? Dad's information has been sent to Airway Heights for service. Okay. Mom, mom is jumping around, was jumping around and I can't find her again. She was, <laughs> she was going to come I'm over. Fine, I'm, here, I'm here right now. I'm oh, oh, Kaylee, Kaylee is here. Oh, yeah. oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Ms. Born is here. here. Okay, good. Yeah, we were supposed to meet up last Thursday, but something got got canceled, so we didn't weren't able to. Uh, Ms. Bornstadt, um, you continue to oppose this guardianship, is that right? No, Your Honor, um, I'm not opposing um, uh, temporary guardianship with uh, Tina having um, guardianship. Say that one more time. I, I'm not I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, not opposing, I'm not opposing Gina to have to have the temporary guardianship now that okay. it's going to, to her. Okay. Um, so you're okay with the uh, what we would call an emergency minor guardianship that lasts 60 days. Yes. And do we know where the father is at? Yes, he's in Airway Heights um, in a... Washington State Corrections. Oh, okay. It's at the, the correction place. Okay. All right. I think we're going to have to wait um, until we can get him served. And it looks like you're in the process of doing that. Yes. Okay. Ms. Farr, any idea how long you think that will take? Um, Ms. Canoni said that she just recently sent those documents. So it should be within a week. Okay. They, they should serve within a day or two of receiving them. Okay. Well, maybe we could come back on June 8th then. Well, I don't, he's got to have a chance to respond. Correct. Um, we got to go farther than that. Well, we should put this out to June 22nd and that'll give him the 20 days to respond. Uh, hopefully the father is, is served. If he uh, responds great, if he doesn't, then we probably can go forward and enter the emergency minor guardianship. And, um, and then we'll we'll go forward from there. And may yeah, I just I have... I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> may I just ask, Mother, is that your phone number that we're seeing? Is that the best number to get a hold of you at? Um, no, not not right now. I, I don't I don't have a phone number right this second. Um, but I will in the next in the next week. I can are get a hold are of you somebody. able to write my phone number down? Because I really would like to talk with you. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I have a pen, pen and paper. Okay. okay. Who is this again? This is Sherry Farr, and I am the investigator for this case. That's okay. F A R R, Sherry Farr. Okay. And thank you. you. Want me to call you today sometime yes, please. I have okay. a question. Okay, no problem. Thank, thank you. You had a question? I do. Do I still have to serve her? Uh, that would probably be good so that we have a proof of service in the file to show that. Okay. 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 All right. Or um, I think in the court forums, there's a consent to um, or acceptance of service. That she might be able that. to sign. Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to meet up uh, last Thursday, and I was going to um, show her and have her sign that, but first we got it was canceled. So, so we haven't got to meet up again. Okay. So either serve or yeah. if um, Ms. Bourne said, signs an acceptance, that that will work also. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Gina, what's your phone number again? Because I lost my phone. Uh, can I get your number again so I can call you to see if we can set that up? Ms. Farr or or Ms. Kianono? Sure, no, no. Kianoni. Uh, Gina. Yeah. Gina. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, uh, can I say it with, um, on this um, I'd rather you not. I don't like private numbers uh, going out okay. on YouTube. Um, so maybe, so, uh, Ms. Farr can get it to, yes. to her when, um, she calls Ms. Farr this afternoon. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Anything else in this case? Okay. Nope. All right. Thank you everyone. We'll see you back here on June 22nd.